So I'm going to be showing how to make the chocolate chip icebox cookies. The ingredients I used, as you can see, are 5 cups of all-purpose flour, 1 teaspoon of baking powder, 1 tablespoon of ground cinnamon, 1 pound of margarine, 1 cup of white sugar, 1 cup of light brown sugar, 3 eggs, and optional was 3 cups of chocolate chips. And here I'm just showing you my ingredients. Of course I have the chocolate chips the margarine, baking soda, cinnamon, three eggs, the light brown sugar, and the all-purpose flour, and my sugar, which is in that weird fruit thingy, and my saran wrap, which I will be using later. Here are my mixing bowls. And I have my measuring cups, measuring spoons, my whisk, and my rubber spatula. Okay, so now I'm just going to be measuring out the dry ingredients. So for the first one, I'm just going to be using the one teaspoon of baked soda. Now I'm just going to be putting in five cups of flour. I am using a half cup, so it is going to take a little bit longer. Now I'm just going to be putting in one tablespoon of ground cinnamon. Now I'm just going to take my whisk and mix everything together. Once I've got it all together, I'm going to set it aside and just move on to my next part of the recipe. And this is what the flour mixture looks like. So now moving on, I am just going to take this bowl and I'm going to put my other ingredients in it. The first ingredient was softened margarine. I've had it sitting out for a couple of hours now. This recipe did call for a whole pound of margarine, which is two cups. Um, however, I did forget to cut the butter beforehand, so as you can see, I'm just trying to separate it into smaller pieces, so it will be easier to incorporate. Yeah, this took quite a while to do, so I'm just going to fast forward through it. Now that I'm finally done with that, I am going to be putting in my next two ingredients, which is the white sugar and the light brown sugar, and I'm going to be using one cup of each. So once I've finished putting all of the ingredients in the bowl, I am just going to mix everything together. I do not have an electric mixer, so just bear with me while I go through my journey of torture. This took a long time to do and it was a very, very hefty process. Um, what I'm trying to do is just smooth everything out and make sure it's all incorporated with each other 
and then you can watch as I make the stupidest decision of my life. Yeah, I very quickly realized that that was a very dumb decision that I just did, and... Yeah... I quickly decided to go back into using my rubber spatula. And at this point is when I realized that it would have been worth it just to invest in that electric mixer. This whole process took me about 10 minutes to mix everything together. After I finished smoothing everything out, this is what it looked like, and then I just began adding in the eggs. I put in one egg at a time to make sure I could fully incorporate each egg into the margarine mix before the next. I actually had run out of eggs and didn't realize it, and my neighbor was kind enough to give me some eggs that his chickens laid. You should be glad you don't have to actually hear the mixing noises because it sounds disgusting. And after I finally finished mixing that up, this is what it looked like. Now I am just going to mix the flour mixture and the margarine mix together. I actually had to get another larger bowl because the flour was just not going to fit into either of those bowls. So I poured the margarine mixture into the bowl first. Since this is a lot of flour, I'm going to be putting it in slowly. Still wishing I got that electrical mixer.
and mixing this took me about 8 minutes. I did get tired of using that spatula, so I put some flour on my hands and began to use my hands instead. Which ended up being a lot better. And this is me just playing around with the dough. So this is what it finally looked like. And next I'm just going to be adding in the final thing which is the chocolate chips. As you can see, I didn't exactly measure out the chocolate chips because the recipe did not call for it. My group and I decided to add this on our own because we wanted it to be a little yummier. I did feel a need to compare the dough to a watermelon we had. And finally what I'm doing is just laying out a piece of saran wrap to form my dough into a log shape. Since the dough was so huge, I ended up taking a knife and cutting it in half. And then I just formed it into a log shape. Since icebox cookies are traditionally known to be smaller and different shapes, I decided to just make ours into rectangles. And now I'm just wrapping it up and getting ready to put it into the freezer overnight after I do my second log. Now I am laying out another piece of saran wrap and doing the same thing with the second piece of dough. Unfortunately my camera died without me realizing it, but you already saw me roll the first log, so here are just the two logs next to each other. And this is just me putting the logs into the freezer to freeze overnight and then be ready to bake. 